In this video, we're going to talk about graph shifting, graph stretching, and graph shrinking. So we'll first start with vertical shifts. So you may be familiar with graphs such as y equals mx plus b. And this is a nice linear graph. In this case, we have f of x equals x, which is like saying uh, 1x plus 0. It's very similar. But what we know about the b is that this is called the y-intercept. So this is where the graph is going to cross our y-axis. So we see right here that it's crossing at this center point 0. So what happens is, let's say we take something like f of x plus 2. In this case, we'd be having x plus 2. What we would do in this case is that we would be shifting our graph two units up. So now it's crossing the x-axis at y is equal to 2. So what I can do is I can draw this in here. So we get the same graph, but we get it shifted two units up. So this is when we take f of x and then we add 2 to that. So if we add any real number c to it, we're going to shift the graph of c units. But let's also consider something else. So what if we take something like uh, f of x minus 3? So this is going to be equal to the graph of x minus 3. So this means that we're shifting down the graph three units. So if we're going to draw this in, we would get a nice line that looks like this, and it would be three units down. So shifting downwards, this would be f of x minus three. So if we subtract any real number from f of x, we're going to shift the graph down that many units. So this is just vertical graph shifting uh, this one is usually one of the more straightforward ones to do. Now, something that's often a little bit more confusing is shifting a graph horizontally. So, we do this by modifying the x inside the function. In other words, you're sort of changing your, not your domain, but you're changing your input a little bit. So here we have the graph f of x. And what happens is if we graph f of x plus c, you would think that that plus means that you're going to shift it right, but that's not the case. So let's say that you have zero is equal to x, and now you're replacing x with x plus three, or x plus c. You'd be getting zero equals x plus c, but if you move the c to the other side, you're going to get negative c. So this indicates a left shift. So when we do f of x plus c, we're also going to get a left shift. So let's say that now we want to graph uh, f of x equals x plus c. So we want to graph something like, I'll use a different color for this, uh, f of x plus 2. Well, this means that we're going to be shifting the graph two units to the left. So if we put in our little values here, this is negative 1, this is negative 2, our crossing point should be at about there. So if we were to draw this in, we would get a graph that looks like this. Now this looks very similar to the one that we just did, but we're focusing on a different component. We're focusing on that shifting left component. Now what if we have something like f of x minus c? So we can do the same thing. If 0 is equal to x, we can make an analog. 0 is equal to x minus c, which means that c is going to be equal to x. So this is indicating a rightward shift. So let's say we wanted to do uh, f of x minus 3. We'd be going 1, 2, 3 units over to the right. So we would be crossing at that point there. So the graph would look a little bit like this. So in other words, with a leftward shift, we're adding something inside of our function. So f of x plus 2, f of x plus 5. And if we're doing a rightward shift, we are subtracting 
like f of x minus 3 in this case, or f of x minus c. So what we can do is we can take both of these operators and we can combine them. So we can do vertical shifting and we can do horizontal shifting at the same time. So what we're going to start with is graphing a function f of x equals x squared. So it's going to start at 0, 0. Uh, whether we're at 1 or negative 1, we're going to get to the point at 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. When we get to negative 2 and positive 2, we are going to be up at 4. And this is going to keep going. So negative 3 would give you 9, negative 4 would give you 16, and so on. So this is a standard parabola. I'm drawing this all rightly. So something like this. This should be a little bit more curved at the bottom, but believe me, this is... I'm not good at, at drawing graphs. So uh, we'll label this as f of x. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write f of x plus 5. So we're going to shift the graph up 5 units. So this plus 5 is outside, so we're going up 5 units. Which means our start is going to be at this point 5, 0. Sorry, 0, 5. And then what we're going to do is at 6, we're going to get our point up 1 bit. And we're basically going to keep going upwards. So this would be g of x is equal to f of x plus 5. So this is just our upward shift. Now what if we want to do f of x plus 2? So this is going to be h of x here in this case. So because we're doing f of x plus 2, that means we're going to be shifting everything to the left 2. So our starting point is going to be here. I'll put a couple more values. So our starting point is at negative 2, 0. We go up 1 bit. We're going to get negative 3, 1 and negative 1, 1. And then at negative 4, we're going to be going up to the point 4. At 0, we're going to be going up to the point 4. So our graph will look a little bit like this. And this is going to be h of x is equal to f of x plus 2. So that would be a left shift. So in each one of these, we just did one shift. But we can combine them. So with j of x, we do f of x minus 1 minus 2. So there's two things going on. There's going to be a downward shift of 2, and x minus 1 is going to say there's a rightward shift of 1. So if we put in some points here, remember we're going down 2, so our initial point at 0, 0 would be right here, but we're also going right 1. So our first point is going to be right there. Our point at negative 1, 1 is going to go down 2, so it's going to go to uh, negative 1, negative 1. That's going to be shifted over right to 1. So what we're going to get is a graph that looks a little bit like this. So this is going to be j of x is equal to f of x minus 1 minus 2. So these could be drawn a little bit better. I just drew the first three points. Um, but this is how we can combine our shifts together. So that is graph shifting. Let's talk about stretching. So the first thing we can do is we can stretch a graph vertically. So imagine we have f of x is equal to the square root of x. And we want to stretch it vertically. So what we can do is we can put a real number before it. So now if you think about this, for the square root of x, and for the square root of x times 3, if we were to put... Uh, x equals 1 in there, we get the square root of 1, which is 1, but 3 times the square root of 1 is 3. So in other words, our first value is going to be higher than normal. If we put in x is equal to 2, or let's just do x equals 4 to make the numbers nice, the square root of x would be 2. But the square root of 3, the uh, square root of x times 3, is going to be 3 times 2, which is 6. So if we put in a number that's greater than 1, it's going to make it bigger in height. So let's do that. Let's do f of x is equal to 3 times the square root of x. So this means that at x equals 1, 
we're going to be up at y equals three. So we should be making something right there. And if we're at x equals four, well, y is going to be all the way up at six. So about there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our points and we're going to shift them up by multiplying by three in this case. So uh, four, two now goes to four, six. Now, if we decide instead to pick a number, I won't use yellow here, I'll use white, uh, between zero and one. So let's say we had one half root x, what do we think is gonna happen? Well, if x equals one, we're gonna get one times a half. If we get x equals four, that should be two, but we're gonna get one half times two, which is one. So if we use a fraction in our shifting, what happens is we make it smaller or shorter, but I'll just say smaller in height. So now at this point, one, one, we should be getting halfway up there. At this point, four, two, we should be getting halfway up there to four, one. So our graph now looks a little bit like this, and this is f of x equals one half root x. So you can think about the bigger the number, the higher it's going to be, the smaller the number, the lower it's going to be compared to your original function. So that is vertical shifting. Now, what about horizontal shifting? This is probably what you expect it to be based on what we learned with shifting. So let's say that we have f of x is equal to root x. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put f of 2x in there. So now we're going to get the square root of 2x. Well, what's going to happen in this case? So let's say that 1 is equal to the, squ uh, the square. Let's just start with something simple here. Let's say that 1 is equal to x. And now what we do is we're going to multiply this by c. So 1 equals cx. And now we're going to get a division, so 1 over c. So in other words, when we multiply our function by c, what happens is it gets uh, slimmer. That's the word. It gets slimmer. So let's say that we're going to do something like uh, f of x is equal to or let's just pick f of uh, 2x for simplicity. So this would be uh, the square root of 2x. So what's going to happen is we're going to get to our points faster. So what we can do is we can take the midpoint between all of these, and what we're going to get is a graph that reaches all of those points twice as fast. So this is going to be f of 2x. Now, what happens if, let me just remove this f of 2x at the bottom. What happens if we do something like uh, f of 1 half x? Well, if we do our old trick where we take 1 equals x and we substitute x in with 1 half x, what happens is that x is getting wider in this case. So that means we're going to take twice as long to get to our points. So instead of 1, 1, we're going to get 2, 1. Instead of 4, 2, we're going to get it happening at 8, 2. So if we draw our graph like this, this would be f of 1 half x. It is getting wider. It's taking a little bit longer in the x-axis to get to those points. So. You can think of this, uh, if c is greater or equal to 1, it gets slimmer, and if c is between 0 and 1, where you're multiplying inside the function, it's going to get wider. So let's put everything we've learned together into a practice problem. So f of x is equal to 3 minus 2 times x minus 1 squared. And what we're going to do with, is we're going to start with x squared. 
then we're going to build up our shifts. So I'm just going to go up to four like I did before. So we have some points here. So one, one, four, uh, one, one, two, four, negative one, one, and negative two, four. So we're going to get a nice little parabola. We're going to pretend that I hit those points perfectly. So there's a few things I see in here. It's three minus something. So the three on its own represents a vertical shift. So we're going to say this is up three units. When we do x minus one inside the brackets, this means we're going to be going right one point because we're doing a negative. And then doing the two here outside of our function is signalizing that we're going to make it taller by two times. So what's going to happen is let's say we have a point one, one. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to shift it right one. So this would give us the point two, one. What we're going to do then is we're going to make it taller by two, give us the point two, two. And then we're going to shift it up three, which is going to give us the point two, five. So that is going to be our starting point. Not our starting point, but the point one, one being shifted. So I will need a couple more lines here. We're doing a right shift. So usually what I actually like to do is start at zero, zero because zero is the easiest. We just have to do some shifting in certain directions. We don't have to make things taller or slimmer because zero, zero can't be stretched. So this is gonna be up three and right one. So this is gonna start at one, three. Now, what's going to happen in this case, let's just get rid of this. We're going to make the point taller by two times. So instead of uh, starting at, well, really at this point, we're just, we've already figured out the shift. We just have to make things a little bit wider. So if this is our starting point for this one, then we can make the same shift to the starting point in this one, except it's going to be two times taller. So here we're going to be looking at two, five, like we saw before, and then in terms of this left shift from negative one, one, we'll do something very similar. So if this is at this point here, we know it should be one point over. So we're gonna be left at zero, five, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, oh, sorry, zero, six. So this is going to be this point here. In fact, I believe drawn this one just a little bit too high. So it should be at this point and at this point. So this would be our graph and we'd see everything being just a little bit taller. So visually, I'm not the best drawer, but these are the steps that we can take to do these graphs. If you have any questions, you know what to do.